jazz age living, old fashioned sipping, pizzazz ain't missing, got the fat cats kissing the top, bring the old age back, away grandpa from his nap, we bring in the Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 23, Michael Jordan's number, of the Sunday Punch podcast. We're welcoming, what is this, number four for Dirty Mike? I think it's number four. M- might be four, yeah. Sweet. Always, always a pleasure. Always Thank a you. pleasure. And he's got a mustache this time. You know, I had to save it for the cast. <laughs> and the Hawaiian shirt. And we've captured it on HD. I was going to say, happy first day of spring, boys. We got Mike in the Hawaiian parrot shirt. We got mm-hmm. Adam in a tank with mermaids on it. And I'm rocking the, the, the deep V. The d- <laughs> it could be deeper. Or it could be deeper. Is that from Old Navy? It could be deeper. It's this looking is, good. This is a hand-me-down from Matt Jones, who's effectively my older brother. <laughs> Not Do bad. you know the reason why I wear the tank top each time? You're going to say because it's to like, maybe show off my pump or something? It's to show off your biceps, In- which are the size of dad caps. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. It's because I actually, for some reason, I'm not nervous, obviously. Nice. Um, but I sweat. I sweat a lot. On these so it's, bree- it's a breathable kind of deal. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like so I can get, you know, I have a bad sweating problem. Well, it's, it's as breathable insofar as air is touching his skin. <laughs> I don't know how much more breathable that is. I would like to what put is, this out. You're the doctor. Yeah. What is wrong with me? Dude? I, I kind of want to put this out to our viewership. I, I would love some comments on this video or other videos um, regarding who's using deodorant and who's, who's using deodorant plus antiperspirant. I want to run a retrospective analysis on who thinks they're sweating more. I transitioned I from... I sweat the most. I transitioned sure. from antiperspirant and deodorant to just deodorant. Hands down, I sweat less. Okay. And what, what is the... I never know the difference. The antiperspirant includes like some heavy metal... What mm-hmm. am I thinking here? Like, oh, aluminum, zirconium, zirconium etc. Heavy metal, dude. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Heavy metal. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Excellent. Um, so I think so that clogs the pores. Yeah. I think your body then feels like I'm not cooling through my low grade sweating gear. Ramp it up to two, three, four, five. Then you start just pouring sweat. Oh. So yep. maybe I'm getting adjusted because Matt Jones suggested I get this like all natural stuff, which I did, and I am. And it's like it's, what uh, it's, Tom's? It's okay. No, not Tom's. <laughs> it actually has a scent. It smells like coconut. My dad quite, gets Tom's. Quite pl- does he? Checks oh, yeah. out. Oh, What's Tom's his name? Tom's is the worst. Oh, it, that's why I picked it. Tom, <laughs> Tom uses Tom's. Oh, okay. He was. I, I can already picture. That's a classic dad thing. He's like, oh, that's it's made me. for me. <laughs> it must be good. No, but I, I'm on this all natural stuff, and I'm still sweating. So I don't know what it is. Now they're telling me they who they dude. Um, now they're telling me that, like, to really eliminate it, and this was on St. Patrick's Day yeah. at that table. Yeah. They said, oh, yeah. you should uh, I know shave your going. armpits and get Botox. I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, that's a little extreme, don't we think? <laughs> that's a little out there. And it t- and it only lasts four months, and it's like 700 bucks. I, I was going to ask you, and feel free to plead the fifth on this one. Have you explored female deodorant, antiperspirant? I have. I've tried it. Yeah. It doesn't work. Some people do, and I, I find it never works. So it I, I, I think work. the answer is just flip to pure deodorant. I'm telling you. It sounds crazy. I've flipped to, and for not these casts, because I don't want to waste them. I only have a set <laughs> amount. But I have, like, these maxi pads that oh you can put goodness. on, like, you can stick it on your shirt. On your shirt. Yeah. Well, because, dude, if I'm given a big presentation at work, I can't be sweating. You need so some propranolol. So I get, I get the... No, I take that too. And Glycopyrrolate? Still, and yet I still sweat. Glycopyrrolate? <laughs> I take the prop, dude. The prop? What's that? What Glycopyrrolate? We'll talk about that off air. <laughs> G- <laughs> Ginkgo biloba? <laughs> <laughs> I'll lie to that this week. <laughs> um, no, so I, I take the prop. So I, I'm calm. Like, just like now. I'm very calm, but it's something about talking. It, and to it's be just, clear... It's me... You know, it's sweaty. It's, you need a, you need a psychologist, is what well, you mean. obviously. <laughs> well, I didn't want to go directly. You know, how can I work around the we'll get that We'll get to that at hour one of the yeah. class. Um, no, but I mean, to be clear, it, it's 46 in Chicago today. Beautiful, sunny day. First day of spring. We got the window open. Adam will sweat the entire episode. Look, it's already happening, dude. Look at that. Thank God you wore that breathable no sleeve. Ooh, it smells good. <sighs> Coconut. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was sweating last night. I know none of you watched it, but <laughs> I was watching the Bulls, uh-huh. the Chicago Bulls, Mike, and um, not Who's not that? the South Florida Bulls, not the USF Bulls. <laughs> Go Bulls! <laughs> Go Bulls! Oh, you want to you explain Bulls. that one, Sean? So I, I, I as a brief aside, yes. I, I did not go to USF. I interviewed there for medical school, uh-huh. and afterwards, Mike, who did go to USF. Mm-hmm. 
Rebels. And I met the University of Florida. And apparently, <laughs> much like at, you know, every college has their cheer when they disagree yeah. with a referee call on the field. Respectfully disagree. Respectfully disagree. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, allegedly, what the USF fans will do is throw up the bull sign with one hand, use the opposite form on the other, and then move the hands in a motion like uh-huh. this for, what is it, Mike, bullshit? Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, man, it's super creative. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It beats they the don't show that. They don't show that on TV. <laughs> Mostly because they don't show USF games on TV. <laughs> Sick burn. Remember that time USF was ranked two for like a minute? <laughs> We're... 2005, 2006. Maybe. Was this in the NC? No, no, no. That no, was in football. This is football, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who they, that was when they had, uh, who was their quarterback? Oh, man. Del Greco or something? <laughs> He's the Greek? Yeah. 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 Greco. Of, of Greece. <laughs> no, I think his name was similar to that. I think his name was similar to that. He had a sweet name. Yeah. yeah. Look it up. Anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll while pull, he's looking I'll pull it up, it up. I'll pull while up, you're looking it up, I'll talk about the Bulls because I was sweating last night because the Bulls cannot figure it out. They have now given up two over 20 point leads one to the spurs which is just outrageous because they don't have anyone on their team they have pop um and then last night again they give up they're up 14 with eight minutes to go versus the nuggets and they just they just choke billy donovan was i've never seen and we you know us we've seen billy we've seen billy throughout the years i've never seen him more pissed really? than last night He's and a pretty composed guy. He's a pretty composed guy. But last night he was like, you know, it's almost like it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy with us. We get to the fourth. And what is it about? Like, these should be professionals, you know? Like, all right, one game. Makes sense, right? You were out the it night happens. before. It happens. Kaylee Conifer Two, was reaching Kaylee out. Kaylee Conifer. Well, Denzel Valentine doesn't even play anymore, so <laughs> whatever, dude. Enjoy Kaylee Conifer. She's not going to stick around. If he's not playing, she's not going to stick around. Just to catch Mike up, that's an Instagram <laughs> model that I was bullying that knows Denzel Valentine. Oh, okay. Anyways, okay. What was I talking about? Um, you're talking about it seems to be a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah, with yeah. us. You would think one time. Okay. The Bulls twice and throughout the season have given up lead after lead after lead. And it's getting, I watched Zach last night. Zach Levine is the real deal. He's Such an all-star. A G. Such a G. I could see frustration on his face, which gets me worried because you know these guys, you know, once you get to that diva level, you can't mm-hmm. wait around because they'll think, oh, I can't win here. I got to get out of here. I got to get out. But now I see him frustrated. You got to make a move, okay? The trade deadline's next week. Make a move. And what I would do if I was Billy Donovan is I would say to Zach, get a Gator. Yeah, we're going to get a Gator. We're going to get Bradley Beal. We're going to get him in here. Uh huh. Yeah. Bradley Beal, clutch, scores a lot. You can get rid of, um, although I heard Bradley Beal wants to wait it out. So we could just sign him. Another one's Lonzo Ball. I know I went on. Wow. I know I went on the Lonzo Ball rant. But actually, I've watched some Pelicans games. He could shoot the ball. I was way off. He's probably going to be again. He's probably gonna be rookie of the year. Lonzo Ball? Did he go back in time? Lamelo. God <laughs> damn it! That's family. <laughs> Wait a second. Dude, the time day one. machine thing doesn't come up until We're later. We're covering that later. But I'm excited to get to that topic. Sorry, <laughs> Lamelo. Well, it, hey, I'll forgive you because Lamelo has been playing such great basketball playing that baseball. you've just forgotten about the older kind brother. Of have. Yeah, but he's on the Pelicans and he's doing pretty good. So. That's one option if you want to make a trade. Another option would be bring in Bradley Beal. And I also heard that um, you guys don't know any of these people, so I'm just going to talk to the camera. (laughs) Trade Laurie Markkinen for Obi Toppin in New York. He's a tough, super athletic guy. Laurie Markkinen is a lanky nerd. Those sound like Lord of the Rings characters. (laughs) (laughs) From from Middle Earth. Are you sure? (laughs) That guy's from Game of Thrones, I'm pretty sure. (laughs) That's good. That's good. Obi (laughs) Toppin, the white. But other... uh, No, actually, Laurie Markkinen, the white. Because he's white. The white. And you can tell. Much like Dan Donovan. I don't want to go any further than that. He's white, and you can tell on the court, okay? (laughs) Not athletic. Speaking of basketball in Chicago, Loyola's in the NCAA tournament. One yesterday. March Madness started this week. I'm very excited. A couple big upsets early on, one of which are the Gators, but really the biggest one that I saw, Gators beating uh, Virginia Tech. Oh, no, they they were favorite. They were favorite, excuse me. 
Barely, though. Um, that was a neck and neck game. And then Ohio, Ohio State. State with the big loss, which is great. To Oral the, Roberts. Right, which means the Gators will play Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts. Yeah. So I was really about. hoping for a Colgate Oral Roberts matchup, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> We've all been waiting for that. <laughs> for years, I've just wanted Colgate to play Oral Roberts and let the memes go. Um, no, but it's good for uh, the Florida Gator. You know, my, hey, 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 it took, it took a that? second. Hey, hey, Mike, Mike really liked that one. <laughs> Mike, can, at, Mike, compose yourself. Mike, out of explain the joke. Ten. Explain the joke. Well, Colgate's a toothpaste. <laughs> also a college. And Oral Roberts has oral in the name. <laughs> That's a big jump there. That was good. It's a big jump. It's a big jump. <laughs> but, yeah, so the Gators get to play Oral Roberts, which is good for us. I think so. Because, I mean, you could always get the Cinderella team, George Mason back in the day. FGCU. But we beat their ass, mm-hmm. by the way, <laughs> at that point in time. FGCU, guess who beat their ass? Gators. Florida Gators again. <laughs> uh-huh. So we're, the Florida Gators are known for ending people's hopes. So I think we'll do that with Oral Roberts. Is Gonzaga still today? a thing? Do you have a bracket? I, I you, guys, I, I <laughs> got, <laughs> guys, guys, I got some confidential intel. We have the bracket from our lawyer. Oh, <laughs> I sent it to you, Sean. Pick it up. Bring it up. It well, up let's right talk now. about today's games. Let's let's see what she picked yesterday. The Sunday Punch lawyer. <laughs> um, she doesn't talk to us. <laughs> and she never joins. But and she doesn't really represent us. Is she on But retainer? she is our lawyer. <laughs> Where is it? Was it the email I, you just sent? It's a, it's a separate email. I thought you had a hard copy. You seem like a hard copy oh, kind of guy. I got it right here. I got it right here. Pull it up, Sean. Pull I'll, it I'll up. blow it up. I'll blow it up. All right. You seem like a hard <laughs> copy kind of guy. <laughs> Not wrong. <laughs> she knows a lot about basketball, sports. Yeah. Is she, now, is she in a bracket? Explain her qualifications. Like, like, like an actual one where you bet money and there's something on the line. I think it's just like an office kind of thing. Oh, okay. It, bragging rights, you know. Yeah. Just bragging. I put, I, I All right, put, here we go. I put We're some up. moolah on We're it. Up. Mine's worth thousands of dollars. We're live. So what do you notice first here? What's the first thing you're looking at here? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I Who's said you're fired. Our lawyer is off retainer. C- canceled. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, she's, on, she's on retainer wow. for her lawyer. Wow. For <laughs> major, major, no, practice. that's how I choose my lawyers, Mike. Major uh, Big Ten fan here. Michigan, <laughs> yeah. Ohio State. She wanted that matchup again. <laughs> They're not competitive in football, she thought. Maybe they can do it. Why did you, and is there any reason, rhyme or reason to this? Oh, she's an Ohio State fan just generally. Oh, okay. So you got to bring it to the How end. far does she have the Gators going? Let's take a look here. Yeah, let's she, Oh, let's she, see if she turned on the Gators. Did she give some respect to the Gators? She gave some rec- Okay. Losing to Ohio State. Well, that's not going to happen. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> but I like how they're just oral <laughs> in all caps. Oral. <laughs> like there's plenty of room to maybe put like an R. <laughs> no, they're no, just no. oral. <laughs> there's some there's some senior intern hoping to get like a full time position with the Ohio State like Athletic Association who knows exactly what he's he or she is doing. Where's uh where's where's Loyola? Where's Loyola here? Where's Loyola Chicago? Can you control F it? I might be able to. And then also look up the schedule for today so we can start um, making predictions based off nothing. No, can't can I can't search Come on. Uh, you can't search it, but you can Here it is. Right here. Hey. Loyola Chai. Loyola Chai. She had winning. They're they're playing Illinois. And then wow. losing to Illy. Oh, oh, Illinois. That's an in-state wow. matchup. Illinois is going to destroy them. Illinois is I'm a probably huge, one of the best teams. I'm a huge fan of Illinois. Huge. huge. Are you? One of the biggest. Probably I like ever. That they Are the, you? I like that they have the they Gator colors. They one player on the team. <laughs> <laughs> they got the Gator colors, man. It's like... Uh, <laughs> I'm a color guy. It's the same I like deal. colors. What do you want? Today's games? Yeah. And then we can go through and predict them based off no information whatsoever. Well, actually, today's a big day for me because, um, okay, so just a, a little breakdown of my bracket. Please. I have in my final four, Gonzaga, Alabama. Oh, it's gone. Gonzaga, Alabama. And then in the other uh, division, I have Baylor versus Illinois. Yes. And then I have Gonzaga winning the whole thing versus Illinois. Gonzaga to win it all? But the, the bracket I'm in um, – I looked at the top guy, and he also has the exact same Final Four. So I actually need a couple of the games today to go my way. So here's what we got. Right now, live, Georgetown, Colorado. Okay. I have Georgetown. And these are all central time. Uh, 1145, UNC Greensboro. We know someone down there. Had to pick George. <clears throat> just just a, a quick aside. Had to pick Georgetown. My brother went there. Oh, yeah. And Travi. And Travis. Travi. Uh, Florida State, 
Slaughter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Slaughter. Uh, UNC Greensboro. Uh, we got Eastern Kansas. Washington at Kansas. Yeah, we know what will happen there. And then we got... Who knows anymore? Yes, yeah, that's a good point. It's a good point. And then uh, St. Bonaventure versus LSU. That's what I've been waiting for. St. Bonaventure? More like St. Boner Adventure. <laughs> am I right? <laughs> I said that earlier, and it didn't get any laughs either, so I'm, I'm used to it. Do you think on the bracket they're just boner? <laughs> yeah, if it's the, up to this guy, whoever's making this bracket. Moving on. The oral the one versus thing. boner. <laughs> <laughs> you just beat me to it, man. Yeah, you got it's it. too obvious. A lot, of <laughs> turning, <laughs> a lot of turning for you got to keep your voice down so I can interject. A lot there. of rat tat A lot of rat tat A lot of, inter- a lot of twists and turns. Always uh, sunny. <laughs> A lot of nuance to the lot keys. Of nu- and, and we show it. And we show it. And we show it. <laughs> Texas Southern versus Michigan. Slaughter. Slaughter. Uh, UNC Santa Barbara versus Creighton. Creighton. <laughs> no, Creighton, Creighton. And I have Creighton going past them and then one more. Again, so that would the be... The old Blue Jays. Who would that would be, I've heard who about would that them. be against? That would be against... That would be against... Okay, here we go. It would be... Uh, I actually don't know if these are set up. No, they're not. No. Um, I don't know. I have my bracket. Keep going through them. I own it. I'm going to bring out my bracket. It's it's on, it's I'm coming it. back. You want to email it to me? No, no. I got the hard copy. <laughs> You're a hard copy guy? Yeah. Get on, get on tight on the Zoom. Just put it right in front of the camera. <laughs> and then we, get, then we got some other games later in the day. The one I'm most excited for actually is Missouri, Oklahoma. I think that's going to be fun. Um, not too jazzed about the other games. They'll be fine, but that's what I'm looking at. You got, you got copies? I brought a copy. For everybody? No, just two. <laughs> well, I didn't know I'd be doing this. Give it to Mike. Yeah, I'll read it. There you go. Let's see. Okay. We've broken out the hard copy of the bracket. <laughs> Take us through it, Adam. Okay. Wow. So today, read them off. Creighton. We were talking about Creighton. Creighton would have to play after this. Where are they? This thing is all organized different than the internet. <laughs> the damn internet. <laughs> the internet does. <laughs> the internet tubes are clogged. <laughs> um, Creighton would have to play, and I have Ohio winning. That's why I have Creighton. So Ohio plays Virginia today. I have Ohio at 13 beating number four Virginia. And I need that to happen because the guy in front of me has the exact same final mm-hmm. four. Who is this guy in front of you? Who is this? I don't know. He's got one of those like ESPN names where it's like, User three four nine two nine bracket forty five twenty two one. Sounds like a Russian bot. If I've ever heard three, of one. three, three. Yeah, it's not even a human. It's a I robot. Am a robot. It has like ninety million brackets. Wait, which is kind of hilarious because that means you're competing against a robot, and I could win. This is the Turing <laughs> test. This is the Turing test. I loved when Warren Buffett did that promotion. Genius. He was like, "You get a perfect bracket, I'll give you a billion bucks." <laughs> He's like, all you have to do is give me all of your personal information. <laughs> <laughs> and we all did. <laughs> if there's one person I don't trust my, with my money or my info, it's Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. For sure. <laughs> I love that guy because he's got this like folklore that he can't get away from now, right? Well, now he's like a hundred. Yeah. It's like his folklore is like still drives around in a Ford, like doesn't. Lives in the same house he did when he was 32. It's How like, you, oh, God, shut do, up. Does he still eat McDonald's every morning? No, that's Donald Trump. I think Boring Buffett does it too, man. Who's Boring Buffett? <laughs> boring Buffett, man. Who's Boring Buffett? It's that's what sli- they used to call him in high shady. school. It's a slim shady to Warren Buffett. Um, He's the one stealing your data. And then what I have when we're at it's Will's Northwood man. <laughs> is USC versus, I believe, Drake won. I'll get it for you. Yeah. I'm playing champagne. Drake won. Not talking about the rapper. Talking about the college folks. How much, so, how much thought did you put into this? Um, 20%. <laughs> of, your, of your entire brain power? Yeah. I mean, I looked at some of the teams. I mean, uh-huh. to be honest, I didn't watch a lot of uh, – I've been watching all Chicago Bulls basketball. I haven't watched I a lot you. of, and I and I always thought the Gators sucked this year, so I was like, well, I'm not going to watch them because they suck. Gotcha. Drake um, plays USC. That's yeah, the, that's the game. Yeah, so that's the one at Wills North, and I need USC to win. But yeah, about twenty percent of my brain power into this. That's a lot. Well, sometimes for someone, well, some, with some, <laughs> someone <laughs> of my stature. caliber. Um, 
But I actually think there's a strategy to not putting too much brain power into it, right? Yeah. It's always like the girl like down the office who's like, I, I like, like Blue Jays. And then like Creighton makes it to like the final four. And she's like, oh, wow, look at a Blue Jay. Here's $2,000, Karen. And all the guys are in the copy room just losing yeah, oh, their shit. On. Yeah, all the guys have like Excel tables of like, well, if the forward, I mean, he only averages 6.2 to 7.3. I was watching the Sunday Punch yeah. podcast. Karen's they like, but look at the little bulldog on Gonzaga. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute. Oh, I love it him. looks like my French bulldog. <laughs> Tell me what you really think, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my stereotypical every single girl in the world accent. <laughs> that's, that's only applicable to about 1% yeah, of probably. them. Probably. <laughs> it, it's a gross generalization for sure. It's a gross generalization. <laughs> we, so wait, we, we got a lot to get through today. So just tell us who you have winning, who's in the final four. Okay. Just to repeat. And final to be four. clear, if I may, before you start. In the last three months. You don't months, want to hear another impression of a girl saying last, something about no. Houston. In the last three months, <laughs> yeah. Adam's predictions for games have been abysmal. Abysmal. Yeah. Mm. All right, carry on. So listen up. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone's bracket's already in. So just in case you want to keep up <laughs> with my bracket, I have Gonzaga, <laughs> SEC, Alabama. I just had to. Had yeah, to. Because um, I actually think everyone hates them. I, I think it'd be kind of cool if. So you you could, know, they're not a basketball school, so you win the national championship, and then you, you I win. I hear you. Yeah. I, 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 like, I, like I the story. don't like underdogs. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like winners. <laughs> Anyways, so they're number two. I got them going to the final four. And then in the, uh, the south bracket, I have Baylor. I haven't watched one game, but I've heard they're pretty good. I watched one Illinois game, and they are very good. Are they? And they're I watched really that good. right before the tournament started. So it's not like I saw one and like, their teams changed. It's like, this is their team. They have like a seven foot two monster, two guards that can really just score. You know, they can create their own shot, which is a big thing in the tournament. That's what you need. You know, a lot of these other teams, like whoever beat Ohio State, uh, or, oh, Oral, you know, <laughs> they they can win one of those games because they're so fundamentally sound. Uh huh. But when it comes to like repeating that over and over, eventually talent just wins, yeah. right? Do you like this kind of March Madness one and done style or like the NBA playoffs? Oh, this is way better. This is it, way better. It gets out of the control. NBA is a better product. And that's what I was t- <laughs> like the Florida game. I was telling you guys. We're up by three. Did I already go through this? With, with me, but that was off air. Okay. On air. They were up by three with eight seconds to go. We get the rebound. This guy gets fouled. I'm like, okay, I'm already like texting the group. Like, great to be a Florida Gator. He goes to the line. Got to make one. You've won the game. Bricks the first one. Totally bricks the first one. So I'm like, that's weird. That wouldn't have happened in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and an I'm NBA like, player would have. And I was it. like, maybe, maybe they would have missed in the NBA. But they definitely aren't missing that second one in mm-hmm. the NBA. They'll calibrate, right? I mean, the the second one was worse than the first one. It's like you didn't calibrate at all. He bricks the <laughs> shit out of it. Someone on. Who do we play? Virginia Tech. <laughs> Virginia Tech. There's too many teams. <laughs> Someone on Virginia Tech gets it, passes it up. This guy makes like a Steph Curry three, which is like classic college. Like on the one hand, you can't make a free throw. But on the other hand, some dude from Virginia Tech that you'll never hear of ever again makes like a half court shot. <laughs> so then they go to overtime. And I thought the Gators showed some mental toughness, actually. You know, that's pretty brutal like to be like, mm-hmm. oh, no. Oh, no. Did we just fuck everything up? They come into overtime. Um, they do. I forget who this guy's name. They do have the center, big white guy. Mr. He's center. Mr. Center. <laughs> Uh, that guy was fucking good. And, uh, I think he scored like 20 points and he was unstoppable. So that's why I think that Florida will then move past Oral Roberts because they don't have anyone that can guard that guy. And then I have them playing Texas Tech. Hell man, Florida can make a little run. You never know. (laughs) I think so. I think they'll make a run, which will be good for confidence. The Oral Roberts thing definitely helps. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I will never say never, but I I can't see them winning against us. Did you guys ever go to a... You went to the O-Dome, right? Mm-hmm. You went to a couple games. Love oh, the O-Dome. Once. It was good. Love the O-Dome. You which, know who, uh, which team was that? Oh, I have no idea. So it wasn't Joe Kim Mill. I, I visited oh, no, 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 during no. 06, 07. 
Uh, Joe Kim Noah was like before we got there, actually. Before we got there, I think it was 06, 07, <laughs> yeah. uh, 07, 08. And those games were electric. I mean, like the, the O-Dome in Florida, and I'm sure a lot of college, you know, games like this are just 6, 07, that electric. might have been Bradley Beal. He was there. Irving Walker. I'm pretty sure. And that was that was just those games are great. Amazing yeah. to go to. Um, in, in in med school, um, Snitsky mm-hmm. had his family had seats at like second row, and every now and again you'd get the invite, and that was cool because you really you appreciate the, the the talent from a distance, but you don't really appreciate the size until oh, you're at, f- at floor level with these guys. Because you look at the screen, you're like, like my, my dad does this, right? Like. Oh, I could make that pass. It's like watching Tom Brady. <laughs> well, you, and you, the angle you're watching it in, you're like, why didn't he make that pass? It diminishes well, because the height. there's right. a mm-hmm. giant in front in of way. him. In a way, yeah. Yeah, and like, with like tree trunk arms. Yeah. So you can't like just make an easy like over the top pass. To your point, I did go. My brother brought me when Joe Kim Noah was playing Oof. with Al Horford, with Corey Brewer. With Humphrey. Remember that guy? Uh Um, Lee. Lee. (laughs) Lee. (laughs) Um, And we were like second row. And it was too cool. And Joe Kim Noah was a giant. (laughs) I was like, wow, these guys. And so was Al Horford. That was such a great team. Dude, we had had three NBA players mm -hmm. on that team. Has anyone survived this long in the NBA? Um, Maybe Horford's around. (laughs) Horford's still there. Horford's still still around. uh, Horford's on uh, Oklahoma City. Mm. Just kind of like tapering. Actually, Oklahoma City is not too bad, but they're tapering off, you know. What's wild to me is you look at Joe these. Joe Kim just retired. You look at these college teams and you think like, if any, I mean, especially in today's day, like everybody has the data. Everybody has, like, especially like the, the, the top teams, like everyone has the data. Everybody has the numbers. Everybody can allegedly recruit. Like the package these guys are getting, I'm sure, are like pretty comparable. And then you wonder like, what's the money ball algorithm, right? But so infrequently do like Mountain these Bill. do like these kind of these kind of like super teams show up mm-hmm. where yeah. you have people like Al Horford, Corey Brewer, Joe Kim Noah <clears throat> all in the same team who become like yeah. perennial either all stars or major impact players in the NBA. Yeah, and, and that might be the end of that because now with the G League option yeah, and getting paid, that's what I'm worried about. Uh, I'm not worried about no but. more one and done. <clears throat> you know, maybe so. it was Billy Donovan's divine hand. That could be. Well, that, if that if that's the case, he needs to resurrect it for <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> he needs to res- dude. In all seriousness, Chicago is playing very well. It's just, just the closing. What are the, what are the Bulls Closers missing? Closers get coffee. What, what? what are the Bulls missing? They're missing a second guy. A number two. Yeah. I mean, Zach Levine is the man, right? But every really good team who's going to make a deep playoff run is going to have a second guy. Mm-hmm. Giannis and Chris Middleton, right? Uh, LeBron, AD. Ben Simmons, Joel. Now, Ben Simmons can't shoot, entire, but he's a, he's a defensive stopper, right? 60% of the Brooklyn starting five. <laughs> yeah, everyone on Brooklyn. <laughs> um, and that's what they need. They need a Bradley Beal to come in. Yeah. The rest are really good. Really good young talent. Really, really good. Patrick Williams, I was way off on again. <laughs> it's okay. Florida State product, amazing basketball player. Um, they should get rid of Lori somehow. You're not going to pay that guy $100 million, which is what he wants. From an, from an institutional perspective. Just for like, reference, so you just can build this person in your mind. Lori Markinen is a seven-foot, non-athletic, mm-hmm. but can shoot a three guy. Hmm. Can't guard, can't drive and mm-hmm. make something. He's basically a pick-and-pop shooter. Is there anything missing from an institutional leadership or coaching perspective for the Bulls? I, I think they're on the right track with Billy. Right? They're on the right track right? with Billy, for sure. Mm-hmm. And, and their GM is really good. Yeah, with what he did in OKC and with – yeah, and, and the GM. I, I don't. The have GM con- came from Denver. I don't have concerns there. Yeah. I really don't. It's, it's about just kind of getting the right people and the right chemistry, I think, at this point. And maybe, maybe that's a, a Beal addition. Maybe that's somebody else. Um, there's a ton happening in sports with respect to like teams, Lonzo ball. players, Lonzo maybe. Maybe Lamelo. who knows? <laughs> maybe Lamelo. <laughs> just trade our whole team for Lamelo. Based on the same guy. Based on the same guy. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, but I just want to get back to, I'm happy Marsh Madness is back. I forgot how much I missed mm-hmm. this shit. I forgot how much I missed getting super angry at 19 year olds. Um, you've been playing enough video games, man. That's where it's at. <laughs> That's where it's at. <laughs> yeah. Right. I should play more video games. <laughs> then I could get mad at all the, well, in that case, 12 year olds that I wanted 12. to. <laughs> um, who's the, who, do, do you play video games? 
Not anymore. Ah, uh, retired. <laughs> retired. Put up the controllers. You, you can't speak. compete with someone that's like yeah. <laughs> working 20 hours a day on their <laughs> skill set. <laughs> Yeah, wait, wait, when someone's rocking dual thumbs 20 hours a day, you just can't keep up. Yeah, my limit of bang is like one. These people are probably popping no, four to five. No, dude, they got, they got <laughs> pallets of bang. Talk to us about bang, Mike. You're rocking a, you're rocking a can right now. Oh, the, the bang? A tall boy, if you will. Well, this don't is... say rock too much, dude. They might get it confused with rock star. Ooh, good point. We're talking bang. You know all the hot chicks on Instagram? Well, you're off Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been on Instagram. <laughs> You've never been on Instagram? He's never. <laughs> Well, all the viewers out there, you know what I'm talking about. All the hot chicks on Instagram are apparently drinking bang. Listen. It makes them hot. As is Dirty Mike. Listen. Who's always Listen. been hot. I was hot way before bang, Listen. first of all. Okay. I was a rock star kind of dude. And let me tell you a little history about rock star. So it was made, you know, Red Bull looks nice, but it's teeny tiny. Rockstar's thing was it's big for a smaller price. The CFO of the company was actually the mom of the creator, which means it was run extremely well. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, and I so moved she on. Made, did she make that choice? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have no idea. Okay. That's just a funny fact about the company. But uh, I moved on to Bang because I hadn't seen it before. There's creatine in it, so you got a, you get a little pump. <laughs> well, you, don't, you don't get the pump nope. just from drinking creatine. <laughs> Two doctors will tell you creatine gives you the pump. <laughs> Dude, you're looking huge. What are you doing? I'm just drinking bang. <laughs> Sitting on the couch. <laughs> Check out my pump. Yeah. I'm retaining water. <laughs> I'm yeah. cultivating mass, really. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways. Yeah, bang. Great, great source of vitamins. <laughs> Is um, it? They actually have a, a bunch of good flavors. I mean, it's a little bit cheaper than the uh, other energy drinks, but I think they have a variety of flavors that are really good. What do you rock in there today? This is this is Bang Sourheads. <laughs> they got Bang Lemon Drop, Bang Miami Cola. Bang Sourheads sounds like a rap song. Miami Cola. Miami Cola. What's man? Miami Cola about? <laughs> I, I know it has cocaine in it. <laughs> It literally has cocaine in it. You know, I grew up in Miami. That's why. Yeah. I, that's the why I'm the way I am, and that's why I picked that drink. And that's it. What's your favorite? Is it the sour sour I think, head? You know, every once in a while, I think I'm great, ladies. Every once in a while, I think I'm popping too much creatine. So yeah. some of them have creatine. Sometimes, some of them don't. Then I, you know, then you got to work your way off with a Red Bull. Then Red Bull sugar list. When the button down parrot and Oasis shirt gets a little too tight, you go, I got to back this yeah. down. Yeah, I'm more of a Red Bull guy. Not gonna lie, like the taste. I'll rock. Don't buy taste. it. Don't buy it. But when it's available, I'll I'll, I'll drink one. I, I rock an RBZ almost exclusively for ski <laughs> for, for ski season. RBZ ski season. Ski season. Yeah, that's a good. That's a that's, that's a, a good, good time to grab an RBZ. Oh wait, I, I wanted to ask you, Adam, before we move on, who's your who's your Cinderella team? Who, who's going the furthest on the least? Well, it depends how many RBZs <laughs> they get. But <laughs> which team's drinking the most bang? To be honest, um, I think, and I don't have them going past Alabama, but I think Maryland could make a run. I like Maryland's team. I've watched them play. You're a Maryland guy. One time. I've watched all these teams play one time right before the tournament because there was the uh, Big Ten Championship. Um, Maryland's got a good team. They could make a run. I could could easily see Maryland making a run to the Final Four. Everyone's going to be their head. Chris's head is going to explode when I said (laughs) that. But, well, Chris, you had Ohio State. So what's up, dog? (laughs) And so did our lawyer. Um, and so did our lawyer. <laughs> speaking of speaking of Cinderella's, what's going on with The Bachelor? Mike, do you watch The Bachelor? No. Does Carrie? <laughs> she does not watch The Bachelor. Do you? I don't. I don't watch The oh, Bachelor. Oh, okay. So how are we going to break this down? Well, I, I heard there's a lot of I, I've done some deep reading. I've done some deep reading on The Bachelor. People have been canceled as a consequence. So this is the whole. You want you? Do you want the breakdown, or do you not want to get it? I kind of want to hear it. Okay. You want the Bachelor breakdown? I'll give you the Bachelor breakdown. So we've I think had our, our viewers want the Bachelor. We breakdown. had our first black Bachelor in 20 years. Mm-hmm. Big deal. So he goes on. He's fallen in love with you know who knows falling in love. You know it's a TV show within obviously. the show's mm-hmm. definition Whatever. of that. Whatever. It's like six episodes out, and you can tell that he's connecting. God, this is sad that I know all this shit. But. He's falling in love. But when like, you're alone in your home, Sean, you turn on The Bachelor sometimes. It's not wrong. I'm getting into wine. What else am I supposed to watch? Terminator? <laughs> Anyways, 
I poured a nice glass of wine, six episodes in, it breaks that one of these girls in college went to like a um, a themed like sorority frat like, like party, a, like together. an antebellum South. Kind That's exactly of, what it was. Like, That's like exactly a, okay, what it was. Okay. And Southern bells, Southern bell, plantation wearing owners, wearing a dress, right, going out to a farm somewhere, drinking a lot. Plantation. I don't know if it was a plantation. It might have, like, when we went in Florida, and it wasn't the antebellum thing, but we did go to a farm, and we had a big party, and they had live music. Those mm-hmm. were a blast. Yeah. yeah. Those, Those were, were so fun. fun. So I don't, I'm fun. not sure I would call that a plantation other than just some piece of land somewhere. That, what did we like, used to call the, those? Like, the what frat was, board there works was out. One for, uh, there was one for the, the med the, school. Yeah. What was it called? The med school, dental school, yeah, um, dude. PT pharmacy school, school then you PT take, school. Did it. What was it? For? I'll get into those stories later. I want to stick on the subject. <laughs> so, yeah. So something like that. I don't think they there is any, like history behind like hey we're going we're all going to this plantation and a hundred years ago this, right, right like no one knew that anything, wasn't part right? of it um and You're- so she goes there's pictures of her on the internet in these dresses and like i guess you know that's racist right and the, because they don't know the history. Well, right? from from that, the woke extracted that she has her problem was he she wouldn't really admit like if I got caught in this, some of this shit, mm-hmm. I would just say, you know what? I didn't realize. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. I won't do it again. And, 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 and you know what? I didn't, I would like to learn more about this from someone. The way she came at it was like, oh, I just thought we were wearing like a funny dress, blah, blah. Like, you know, basically not sorry. Not acknowledging. Not acknowledging the that she should have done something different, even though. Mm-hmm. She never would have back in time because she's a young girl. And the mm-hmm. sorority, you know how sororities are. They tell you to do something, you fucking do it. <laughs> like, seriously, you got to lay out your clothes and they yeah. judge the clothes. And then they put you on, a, on, a, on a, uh, a washing machine and see what jiggles. And then they point it out. These are all stories. These are all that's true real? stories. Yeah, these are all true stories God, I've that's heard. that's brutal. That's brutal. That like, sounds bad. That's brutal. DZs and like yeah. AOPI. But like, yeah. So like, you know they're brutal, right? And if... <laughs> Dude, that was the funniest that's thing. DG, Just a quick sidebar. The funniest <laughs> the thing pandemics. ever was me, Travis, and like the, the entire fraternity. You would go out to the street and watch them like run to the different sororities. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, when, a bunch when, of dudes like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're hot. It's just, like, what were we doing? <laughs> was, and they, they like bump into each other they and trip. shit. <laughs> Get blasted sideways. So it probably still happens, let's be honest. <laughs> but so she didn't apologize for it. And then it wound up, you know, so that came out episode like there were six episodes to go. And so everyone starts freaking out like, oh, shit, what if he chose her? Because it's already pretty Because filmed. the timing here is yeah, in sync, right? The timing like, is not already, in sync. They've already, it's already, already done. Yeah. It's already done. Yeah, yeah. And so um, she didn't apologize. Well, she did, but like in like the non-apologetic way. Kind like, of half-assed. Oh, I'm sorry. It. Yeah, it's a little half-assed. That's what Chris Hansen Chris Hansen. <laughs> Bop, dip, dip, my doo-wop. Dig it down, my doo-wop. No, who's the host of The Bachelor? I thought you wanted the band. I don't know. Anyways, whoever that thought guy was, the then got in guy. trouble because he was like, well, I mean, like, things we did in 2017 aren't, like, things that we would do in 2020. It was like, well, 2017 wasn't that long ago, So, dude. so he kind of, like, he was He brushed it. it off. So then that was a whole thing. So then he was off the show. So then it turns out he did pick that one. Just so happens he did pick that one girl. And then so then they have the after rose ceremony. And obviously they're not together because I think his name's Matt James. I'll check it out. He can't get over it, right? And rightfully so. If he, you know, if 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 you were in college as a black mm-hmm. guy and you saw that, and then you couldn't get into a frat for some Matt James, you nailed it. Good looking guy. Yeah, then you probably would feel some sort of way about it. And so he couldn't get over it. And so they're not together. And wow. so that was the whole controversy. So 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 what, what are the lessons learned? W- w- wasted ep- wasted season. He well, didn't find most love. of them. Ninety percent of them are wasted seasons, mm-hmm. but. He went on a podcast. I actually listened to uh, Bill Simmons' podcast, and uh, he went on there and uh, 
was basically like, you know, I went in for the right reasons. Like, I didn't even want to go. He was like, so like a family friend, like convinced me to do it. Apparently he's like a big commercial real estate guy. And he was like, I didn't really want to go. He's like, I'm too busy, blah, blah, blah. But they convinced me into it. I did it. And then it turned out to be like, <laughs> you know, the saddest bachelor season ever. So, so this is, I, I kind of want to take this to, uh, can I, yeah, please, before please you finish, finish, point, finish. How in the hell did bachelor research not catch this shit? Yeah. Do your due diligence. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the first black bachelor, mm -hmm. you got to have teams on this shit. Teams. Like make sure this chick's not in like a plantation dress. <laughs> like mm -hmm. look at her Instagram. This is only like three years ago. Not hard. Anyways, go ahead. Um, so, in, in, so we, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I grew up kind of hearing about this national, not crisis, but, but this issue of divorce rates increasing amongst kind of our, our maybe our parents' generation, whatever it happens mm -hmm. to be. Um, I think I remember hearing quoted around like 40 or 50%, like, like yeah. pretty, pretty high. Yeah. And allegedly like our That's generation, high. yeah, if not higher, if amongst our generation, the millennials, that seems to be actually getting better, 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 better. So, really? so yeah, I did not yeah, know that. There's, there's like 2018, 2019, 2020 studies about this. Yeah, go ahead. Saying, saying that like divorce rates are actually falling amongst our generations. It's early yet. We're just getting because married. We're a couple years in. What are, the, um, what are they attributing it? I, I don't remember. I'll, I'll find that I can out. I attribute probably, it to something. Probably waiting longer waiting to find longer. the right person. Yeah, I, I, that's actually a great point. Like people are developing their careers. I think there's more acknowledgement of men and women having career paths and how do we mutually support one another versus like you not give up everything, but you give away maybe a career to raise a family, whatever it happens to be. Well, there's a big difference between making that decision when you're 24 and, a, and oh, yeah. making that decision when you're 33, right? Like we, mm -hmm. uh, the decision at 33 is like, okay, I know exactly what the foundation is. I can see that like 24 is more of an emotional instinct, yeah. right? Lust. Lust. <laughs> Seven deadly sins. Um, at 32, 33, which is when everyone should start thinking about it, right? Like, you shouldn't be thinking about it at 20. In my personal opinion, you shouldn't be thinking about it at, like, 23 to 25. I, 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 There's some 20 people to 25. that's appropriate. Go, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, There's Mike. some people that's appropriate, I'd say. But not, I'd say the majority aren't. I, th I, I think a you. lot of us, especially with, like, developing careers, maybe doing graduate degrees or landing professions that just take more time, you're still becoming the person you're going to be moving forwards. And it's mm -hmm. hard to pair up with somebody earlier than that. Uh, and therefore, I think taking that time is important. But I guess where I want to go with this is I, I pulled up a statistic, which I thought was really interesting. So amongst bachelorette candidates at five years, what percentage is still married? Bachelorette candidates. What percentage is still married at five, five years? Five percent. Don't right. marry. No, uh, so so out of, the show. out of the proposals, how From many how many have led to marriage? Oh, <laughs> uh, two. Out of the proposals, two that are still together. Thirty percent have led to marriage amongst bachelorette of the bachelor. Five <laughs> zero percent. Eleven percent. Eleven percent. That makes sense. So so mm -hmm. we, we, guy, we. I can see guys getting into it for the wrong reasons. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and so you invest all this Wait, time in thirty girls. So you you invest all this time in almost like voyeurship of these individuals, and you watch this, and it turns out that like this story is not uncommon. Where they 30? just <laughs> where, where where they just don't work out, and yet we we glamorize it, we get excited about it, but. What's these, the, these people aren't finding love. Who are we kidding? What's hey. the average age of a bachelor versus a bachelorette? Yeah. Though? Oh, okay. yeah that, right? could, that could totally change yeah. that statistic. Average age of bachelorette, yeah, like, like, 25. And they average get like a 40. age of bachelor, 42. <laughs> average age of a... Average age of yeah. all contestants at bachelor's, 42. <laughs> oh, this is 25. This is, wait, 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 wait. What are your predictions? What do you think? What do you I think, think uh, bachelor, 35 for guys. Yeah, I'd say late 30s. And then for women, 28. I totally agree with that. <laughs> This, this, was a, this was a quick search. The average age of a woman competing on The Bachelor is 26, while the average age of a guy competing for the heart of a Bachelorette star is 29. Oh. Women on The Bachelor are... are yeah. that, those are the contestants. Yeah. That's not the actual Bachelor. I still say 35. So I'm reading this off. Uh, let's see here. Um, the women on The Bachelor are on average 4.8 years younger mm -hmm. than the lead. 85% of women on The Bachelor are younger than 30, compared to 60% of men on The Bachelorette. Wow, we just figured it out. Interesting. So, so I, I think this speaks to time. I mean, well, it speaks to everything. It, it speaks to, to, it speaks to, 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 to all creation. <laughs> <clears throat> 
average age younger, four and a half. I think that makes sense. To yep. me, it makes sense. Totally. Because when you're a senior, you're always looking at the freshman like, okay, okay, okay. I want to talk about the elephant in the room, if that's okay. Sure. It's a, it's not a dovetail. It's a complete subject change from <laughs> where we are right now. Although I think this is a good topic that arguably deserves more exploring. What I want to talk about is why in the world the Buffalo Bills. Oh, damn. You're really going. Picked up. <laughs> Mitch, it is after all a sports. You're really going. It is after all a sports podcast. This will be a clean cut for Brian, clean our cut, editor. Clean cut. Got it. Why in God's name <laughs> did the <laughs> Buffalo Bills pick up Mitch the Twitch Trubisky? Well, they think he can be a good backup quarterback, and uh, he runs around kind of like Josh Allen. Incorrect. He, can, he cannot be a good backup quarterback. Why can't he be a good backup quarterback? Because Josh Allen might get hurt, and he fits the system. Josh Allen will get hurt. Sean, shed your emotions and think logically. You're talking here. about a backup. The, <laughs> yeah, I like how Sean's having the emotions. He's getting passionate, yeah. man. Why did we sign Mitch Trubisky as our backup? <laughs> Why the fuck did the Bears sign Andy Dalton? <laughs> Let's get it That's all That's the fucking thing I should be pitched, pissed off about. He's talking about someone who's never going to see the field. Hold on. I got to get you more medicine. Keep going. <laughs> You talk about Andy no, Dalton. No, you talk about no. no I, gotta, I want you to I get, get your medicine. pissed off yeah, thing question, out first. Would you rather Andy Dalton or Deshaun Watson right now? Today. Deshaun, this is my point, dude. His value has, like, has got to be hit. Let's start making deals, Ryan. <laughs> He's got an army of massage therapists coming after him. Make the deal, dude. Call Houston. Say, you got a headache. We can fix it. Here's three first-round picks and Khalil Mack. Give us Deshaun. The fuck? That's a godfather deal you can't refuse. What if it goes and down? And I would take it. <laughs> Chicago would rejoice. You don't think that everyone in Chicago wouldn't be like, yeah. No one would say, oh, man, like, oh, but the, th the massage therapist. No one would say that. What's the allegation? First of all, they're all civil lawsuits. This guy goes around collecting people. Okay, wait a second. <laughs> let's be clear. Wait, let's, let's be clear. <laughs> let's be clear. I'm an innocent till proven guilty kind of guy. Go through the system, right? Go through the system. 12 is a lot. 12 is, 12, a is a 12 big, is a lot of people. 12 is a lot of Big number. Big number. That's like a Cuomo number. 12, <laughs> 12 is a lot. Um, but again, we have to let it go through the system. I'm not going to be one of these people making rash judgments, okay? But could you use this as leverage? Yes. If you're Ryan Pace, you can use it as leverage. Get Deshaun Watson here. I hear you, man. I feel like you're Andy Dalton... Speaking of time machines, <laughs> going of back in time to, to Lamello or Lonzo Ball in his rookie year, let's go back in time. Andy Dalton would have been a great signing in 2007. Oh, yeah. Orange Frohawk at full. Yeah, that's when he was good. He wasn't good after that. He wasn't good with the Cowboys. The Cowboys had Amari Cooper, Ezekiel Elliott. They had um, Michael Gallup. He couldn't do anything. What do you what, think? He's going to come to Chicago and start fucking lighting it up with Matt what, Nagy's what offense he, of do, 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 do. What if he I turns think. into like a, kind of an Alex Smith character where he's conservative, consistent? I would have loved Alex Smith. <laughs> Get me Alex Smith. But what if he's Get like. Get me Ryan what? Fitzpatrick. You don't think the Bears, would, the Bears fans would have got hyped for Ryan Fitzpatrick? Oh, 100%. My levels. Mike, take it. Take it. Adam's adjusting his levels. No, I'm good. I, I I'm think good. We, we need to go back to the psychology talk. You need some help. <laughs> Where's the sweat well, level right now? <laughs> it's just like, how can someone be this bad at their job? Ryan Pace doesn't understand the Chicago Bears fan base. If you sign Ryan Fitzpatrick, which is essentially the same strategy of we couldn't get Russell. Right? We couldn't get Russell. We're going to get Ryan here. Deshaun's too volatile right now. Well, Deshaun, before this all cracked, right, before they signed Andy Dalton, was like, Deshaun's too much. To, we couldn't get Deshaun either. Carolina's in the lead for Deshaun Watson. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. Because they have first-round picks and they have uh, assets. They might give up Christian McCaffrey for Deshaun oh, Watson. Oh, wow. And, and first-round assets. Yeah. I, oh, I would do it in a second. Christian, running backs are a dime a dozen, dude. Um... Where was I? 
Bring me back. I'll bring Fitz you back. Magic. Uh, so you, you're yeah. like, if you, yeah. my same gotcha. strategy, right? Get Ryan Fitzpatrick. The Bears fans would have been like, <laughs> we can get behind this guy. He's fucking. He's awesome. He's smart. He's been there before, right? He can. He can. He can wiggle. <laughs> We just watched him throw one of the most amazing passes versus the Raiders when his fucking helmet oh, yeah. was getting ripped off and he threw it 45 yards down the field. Bread basket. Would have been a great signing, Ryan Pace. But instead, and, and you have to know this, if you sign Andy Dalton, he doesn't have a chance because the fan base, every time he makes a mistake, will be like, oh, this fucking guy, they won't get behind him. So therefore, he's destined for failure. I just don't understand how you can be, have the job of Ryan Pace, know that your job's on the line this year, and then just be like, yeah, yeah, we're going to go with Andy Dalton. It's like, well, then you're okay with getting fired then. Right. That's well, cool with you. You want to get fired. Mike? So Fitz Magic, he's like a petrified fossil, man. What is he, 40? He's, dude, he's I'm also saying good it's a one-year like, rental anyway. It's a one-year got, rental. Andy the, Dalton's a one-year rental. He's the type of dude that throws 400 yards, two TDs the next week, Throws like 150 and then three interceptions. The, the, That's Fitz Magic. Yeah. The thing I want to, the <laughs> thing I want you to then tell me is, okay, you've explained Fitz Magic. Uh huh. What's your argument for Andy Dalton versus that? Yeah. Okay. There go, we go. I would go consistent, not not flashy. <laughs> he's not consistent either. He's he's your to He's like your foundation. Okay. You, you, <laughs> Andy Dalton and you, Foundation have never been yeah, used in the same well, sentence. Well, yeah, before. Mike's trolling me. He's thinking of like a 2008 Bengals game he saw. <laughs> I'm to, I'm, no, I'm talking about the Horned Frogs Day, man. Yeah, where, TCU. Where, where? I love frogs. I mean, why does, I pick them? Back to that. <laughs> why, why does why does Chicago not feel like they that they can find anything in the draft prospects? No, I think that is the actual overall plan. I think they think, okay, we're going to get Andy Dalton in for, for a year. We're going to try and get Mac Jones. Right. Mentor year there. The, the problem I have with that is, Ryan Pace, you won't be here by yeah. the time that happens. That whole management's going to get turned over. And then that's not fair to Mac Jones because then Mac Jones has a whole new coach come in, mm -hmm. a whole new culture, and it's like a whole new offensive coordinator, and it's like – you're already setting up our future for failure. Ryan Pace had to go after this year like, we got to get Russell Wilson. We got to get Deshaun Watson. We got to get Derek Carr. We got to get someone that's been close to Derek Carr and MVP or Deshaun Watson, who everyone would love, or Russell Wilson. Now, I'm set. they said, in right, I like how this is being reported. We made a very strong offer for Russell Wilson, who, according to you, Ryan Pace, who can't be trusted, what's your strong offer? Give me the offer. Yeah, I want to hear I, as it. a fan, want to hear the offer. I want to hear it. Because it would have been, for me, it would have been three first-round picks, Khalil Mack, and then, if that's not enough, what do you want? What do you want? We'll give it to you. What are we missing? Yeah. Akeem yeah. Hicks. Yeah. Yeah. He's now on the trade block. These are all assets he could have used. <sighs> It's, it, it just feels to me like a, like a team who was previously a dynasty kind of trying mm -hmm. to patchwork quilt on like pieces with no overall overarching strategy with time. And I think that to your point, if someone's kind of under the gun for their position from a management or a leadership role to go, as Mike said, kind of full conservative, like consistency, you've kind of already surrendered to the fact that you're not going to make it this year. But that doesn't mean the fan base should suffer, that the team should suffer, that we shouldn't be dynamic for the future. And it shows that he doesn't understand the fan base because if you want to go with that strategy, Alex Smith or Ryan Fitzpatrick, the fans could get behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Andy Dalton, the fans cannot get behind. No, I don't think so. They saw him last year all for Dallas. How many? So Alex Smith came in for Washington. They started winning. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah. They were going back and forth because mm -hmm. Ryan Fitzpatrick was clearly better than Tua. Still showing up, mm -hmm. yeah. And was in Buffalo doing good things. He was on many other, eight other teams doing good things. The Polish rifle, sure, man. Sure, he's not consistent, but people would have got excited about that, right? They're like, look, we know what Ryan Fitzpatrick is, but at least it'll be exciting. The Polish rifle in Chicago would have been electric. <laughs> <laughs> electric. I And so he chose out of those three the one that's not going to get and, – and I feel bad for Andy Dalton. Yeah, he's – Andy he's, Dalton now doesn't have a chance at all because every mistake he makes, everyone's going to have in their head. 
we're not giving this guy mistakes, right? There's other guys you give leeway to. Mm -hmm. Almost because Alex Smith, you have a little sympathy, right? Broken, whatever his foot thing is. Ryan Fitzpatrick, it's like, it's known. He's going to whip the ball around and sometimes he's going to throw an interception. Like, it was fun with Jay Cutler, too. Everyone was having fun. (laughs) Like, we're, the Bears weren't winning, but we're having fun. Well, as long Andy as Dalton gives you n- neither of those two things. He's like Rex Grossman all over. That guy. Gator. Who? Andy Rex. Dalton? Yeah. No. He's Re- At least Rex would <laughs> fucking chuck it down the field. He got to a Super Bowl. That's true. Gator. That's true. How, do, how do people get and keep these jobs? Like, how, how is Andy Dalton still? The way everyone gets and keeps jobs, dude. You just do it just good enough where you can't they can't eliminate you forever right any job you go into any and you go into any office there's like the top 10 percent that are thinking new ideas what's the big wow idea i can do for this client what 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 can i do here you know how can i build business even though that's not part of my job description and then the rest who just like hey man like uh like if i'm not working for the weekend yeah like hey man like uh it's not part of my job description and, uh, you know. Is that how they sound? Yeah. They're depressed. <laughs> they're depressed. Here you go. Have you heard of Peter's Principle? No. Yeah. Break it down. <laughs> well, the sentence that I looked up on the internet. The Peter Principle states that if you perform well in your job, you will likely be promoted to the next level of your organization's hierarchy. You will continue to rise up the ladder until you reach the point where you can no longer perform well. Or other words, you say you rise to your level of incompetence. <laughs> I've heard of that before. I've heard that before. That's very true. Which is crazy because then, then you think about Fortune 500 companies, the companies that you, Adam, and I are putting like our investment and future retirement money in. It's like mm-hmm. everyone managing that is just at their level of incompetence. Scary thought, man. Yeah, that that actually brings the point of of should you like should people know their limitations, right? Mm-hmm. And so, don't like, should just and get bringing the this heck back. Out of no, way. no, no, not even this. To bring it back up, right, Andy mm-hmm. Dalton isn't going to be happy as a starter. If I was Andy Dalton, knowing my limitations, I would have been looking at teams thinking, where can I be a backup? That's what I am. Right? You think he's no, thinking no, that. But like just to this That's theory, wild. this to this theory, you're not going to be happy because you're going to find your way to yeah. when you're not competent anymore, right? Just because mm-hmm. you're like, this is the next step. But at, at, at a certain point, you should think, okay, I know my limitations, and this is why basketball is so great. I know my limitations. I know my role. Role player, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a superstar. And that's one of the hardest, they say that's one of the hardest things to accept in basketball. Mm-hmm. In football, it just doesn't seem to exist, right? Yeah. Every quarterback thinks, I could start. No, you're a backup, right? You are a backup. Ryan Fitzpatrick is a backup. Andy Dalton's a backup. Alex Smith is back. And, and the, the reason, I mean, you, you look, you look at. And you'd be happier as backup. How many teams are in the NFL? 30, 32 ish. I mean, look at look at how many people can play that position mm-hmm. and play consistently. Like how many teams are actually toggling between two different quarterbacks every week? One, maybe two in a season, which tells you that there's maybe one. Th- I mean, uh, the yeah. only recent one I can remember is the Miami, Miami, situation. Miami. So like, if you have two quarterbacks, you have zero quarterbacks, which tells you saying. like, realistically, there are 33 people out of 330 million in this country that can actually play your position. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and to actually envision yourself to your point, Adam, as someone who's like, I could start any day. It's not correct. It's not correct because if you would, you you'd be you would have been starting on your last yeah. team. You'd be continuing to start, and so you put these guys kind of in a position to fail. What, what's the output there? I mean, what do we really expect to happen? And I, I think it's and I think it's a reality check for these guys. So back to your original point, Mitchell Trubisky probably realized that and said, "I'm going to go to Buffalo because I'm not going to start, obviously, but I think I could learn some things from Josh Allen and." The system fits me that if I have to go in, I can go in. Like, he could have gone to, what's a team that just really sucks? I guess he could have said to his agent. New England. No, no, he could have said to his agent. Cincinnati. No, Cincinnati is Joe Burrow. But you could have said to your agent, um, I want to go to Denver. That's fair. Because I could be in a QB competition. Which is true. But it's like, yeah, if you go to Denver, though, and you win that, you're not going to win more than five games. Their mm-hmm. team's not good enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what's the point? The pride? Wouldn't you rather be on a winning team 
with that culture. So, so what conditions have to be met for someone in the NFL, a quarterback, let's say, to acknowledge they are a role player as a backup, having been a previous starter? Well, I think everybody gets their chance at starter, and you either prove yourself or you don't, hmm. right? Mitch Trubisky didn't work out. RG3 didn't work out, oh, right? RG3. Poor guy. But, you know, back when I played think soccer. Of, but think about, just real quick, think about has there ever been a quarterback that got, that's gone starter back up to great starter again? What was going on with Nick Foles? Did he do that? He, he filled <laughs> Did he win a Super Bowl? No, <laughs> that dude is a yes, yes, yes. playoff quarterback no, only. <laughs> he filled in on a very good Eagles team. That's fair. And won the Super Bowl. Then what happened? He went to Jacksonville off yeah. a starter. Fell this apart. Is my, going back to my point, he thinks in his mind, I just won the Super Bowl. I'm a starter. No, you aren't. Because then win? you go to Jacksonville, you suck. You come to the Bears, you suck. Yeah. Did he win MVP at the Super Bowl? I think it must have been know. him, right? It must have been. It, I don't know. Look that up. That was, that, when, that was when Philly was that eating horse shit mom. off the street. Right. Isn't that wild? Here we go. How about uh, Kurt Warner? He had a weird career. He did have a weird career, but as soon as he got in, it was like he was the starter. Like he went to the Rams, right? Uh huh. And then who came over? Mike Bulger took over for him. He plays, according to Wikipedia, he played in Amsterdam <laughs> for a period. Just yeah, no, I mean, he was, he was, he was, the whole thing with Kurt Warner was he was uh, doing bags at fucking Publix, dude. Not Publix, yeah. but a grocery store. Kurt? I gotta look into his history. Yeah, he was, he was the bag guy, and then he got called up to the Rams. He was I, an arena, he was an arena league guy. I love that story. He got called up to Rams, and then they were the greatest show on turf with Marshall Falk. Yeah. And Tori Holt. Yeah. yeah. Isaac wow. Bruce. All right, here you go. 2004 season with the New York Giants, Kurt Warner. He was released from the Rams, signed three million deal, went to the Giants. Yeah, he was sucked. benched for Eli Manning. Okay, okay, but now you're talking Arizona. about Eli, dude. Then he went to Arizona. Yeah, and then killed it. Went to yeah. the Super Bowl. Well, there's he's an always been a starter. No, he was always a starter. <laughs> you want an example? No, 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 no. <laughs> New York only went to Eli because he was the future. This they is Andy Dalton. <laughs> they could have. <laughs> They could have played Kurt Warner throughout the Eli Manning period and been fine, is what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Then Kurt Warner goes to Arizona and immediately wins. That's a starting quarterback. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They only went to Eli because they're like, we drafted Eli. How Eli how demanded to go to New York. New York didn't even draft Eli. That's right. San Diego drafted that's Eli. That's right. They did. And then Eli said, no, I want to go to the New York Giants. So that's not Kurt's fault. All right, man. And, and the Rams, by the way, the Rams go to Mark Bulger and immediately suck. Yeah. So Kurt Warner yeah. was always the man. Yeah. So you're set. Okay. okay. Did they, and and they, they did not lose Marshall Falk. They did not lose Isaac Bruce. Well, eventually you lose all these people. But I in think Bulger's that, first year. In I Bulger's think they first lost year. Marshall Falk first to Indy. No, he went to, well, he just wasn't the same, right? Like running backs just aren't the same. That's fair. That's why the whole Christian McCaffrey thing is like, oh yeah, you can, yeah, trade him away. I mean, running backs are running backs. To me, he? they're just commodities. Like, yeah, get it, yeah, they're whatever. Exchangeable. I don't give a fuck. Wasn't that dude the highest paid running back in the league, McCaffrey? This year, probably. And he was out for like whatever he had that injury. Yeah. Nick Foles did win it's the Super Bowl MVP. Mm -hmm. Nick Foles. Did. He he won Super Bowl MVP, which is wild, right? <laughs> Okay, I so, but okay, we can give you the point of Kurt Warner, even I, though I think he's always a starter. Let the record show I won the argument <laughs> <laughs> by getting yelled at. <laughs> but, okay, okay, but even if you were right, that's one out of everyone. <laughs> what's, that, uh, what, what's that expression? The, the first person to raise their voice in an argument has obviously lost that argument. In that case, Adam is 0 for 1,000. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't believe you just, in that. You, you commit to this stance that. and I prove anything else. I don't, right. I don't believe in that. But it, it speaks to a bigger issue, which is I think what you were getting at earlier, Adam, which is how many people in their current role in the world are actually contributing cumulatively to the company, the firm, whatever they're in. I don't know the answer to that, but <laughs> I can't imagine it's overly high. No, it's like anything else, dude. You just got like the the go to people, right? Guys, girls, whatever. Um, and then you got everybody else, right? Movers and shakers. Is yeah, I mean, you them. need everybody else. You do. You need them all. 
You need them all. So this is what's kind of interesting because. But then would, there's the people that like, are, like you got the role players, right? <laughs> then you got the fucking idiots on the bench dancing around, and this is in real life too. Yeah. It's like you didn't do anything, yeah. and it's like how do you have a job? And then you meet people. You're like, seriously, how do you have a job? Like, how <laughs> did you get into an interview? You talked, they listened, and then they gave you a job. I meet people. Forty percent of people I meet are like that. What? <laughs> Mike, you want to take this one? You want to take this Have one? Have you heard the Pareto distribution? <laughs> no, talk to him. Dude, this is what Dirty Mike brings to the cast. This is yeah. why he's on episode four with us. The Pareto distribution. What's the What's the burrito distribution? The, dude? the burrito. <laughs> Am I right? You Am know, I some right? people. Some people well, like call Saint Boner adventure. Some people call it the burrito. Some people call it Pareto. It doesn't really matter. Anyways, it's the 80-20 rule stating that 80% of outcomes are due to 20% of causes. Yeah, I.e., like I agree with that. 20% of employees do 80% of the work. I, agree. Like I that. agree with that. Completely. Now you know. The burrito. And, I, and the burrito. Well, this, this, Al, is, this is what I the find. The burrito. In, this is <laughs> now, I, now you can go to Taco Bell and say, can I get the su- Supreme Burrito? <laughs> you know what that is, right? <laughs> you know what that is, right? Well, that, that's Put what, 80% meat in there and the rest will figure uh-huh, itself uh-huh. out. That's quite interesting to me, though, is like we have, I mean, think about what it costs to hire someone, an NFL player or somebody who's an administrative assistant to someone who's doing custodial work to someone who's the the Don Draper of their firm, right? Like the argument is that like whatever they contribute to this company, to this firm should in value as measured by currency, their salary plus benefits, plus healthcare, plus whatever outstrip their contribution to the firm because the firm should be making money on every additional employee they hire or make so much more on another employee yeah, that, that they, can, figure that out, they yeah. can actually, you know, equalize or bump that person up. So, I mean, what percentage of roles are actually contributing more than their salary to a firm? I mean, pick, 20%. pick your industry. Uh, it, it's it's got to be yeah. small. It's got to be small. Yeah. I mean, like medicine. The most important thing is the interview. Yeah. You get in, it's just like the NFL. <laughs> You get in, you're good. Which, which, yeah. I, which I would agree is a rather irrational way of hiring somebody based on this concept. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. How does Andy Dalton stick around for so long? And afraid to fire. Afraid because to you're, fire. You're, you're taking away someone else's livelihood. Well, that and repercussions legally or anything else. Or, you know, once you hire, it's like, no. Oh really fucking hard to get someone out again we, we, which brings yeah. to an interesting i mean think about like the our current administration's thoughts conversations dialogue on the minimum wage and bumping it up like how many firms or companies or franchises can afford to pay somebody 15 dollars an hour are they overpaying people for the contribution economically to that firm to that company and if so do those companies not just automate or outsource i mean i mean you would have to right i don't know it's such a weird I guess question. We haven't, yeah, it is a weird question because, like, we haven't done it, right? Yeah. So we don't really know. I mean, we know the theoretical effect. It, it's all the theoretical. Theoretical, yeah. theoretical. Like, we, 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 we've played with minimum wage, but we haven't really given somebody a meaningful, livable minimum wage, which begs the question of Andrew Yang, like, should we not just create a universal basic income? Which I'm in support of. I think the question is, like... Yang, uh, gang. Yang gang. It, it's an interest, yeah, it'd be interesting. Yang gang to my dang a lang. <laughs> Yang hang to my dang a lang. <laughs> Guys, be respectful. This guy could be our president. <laughs> That's true. Um, All he has to do is not trip and he'd be Man, your Yang in, just dude. scrambled my brain right there. I don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> we talked about, um, okay, first and foremost, $15, oh, $15. an hour Isn't and then funny? Yang gang. I mean, like a blanket $15 across the country doesn't make any sense, I no, think. No. Isn't it interesting that a state like Florida that's kind of like, I guess now considered conservative past the $15 minimum wage thing that'll come into effect in a couple of years. It'd be interesting to do an experiment. Why don't you just pick like a, an area to implement UBI and see how it, how it works out. Yeah, so he, that makes sense. So, so Andrew Yang did this. So he basically had a foundation. I forget what it was called. Actually, I think I had it like- Is it in California? Recently. It was not, it was in New York. And what he did was he took a area of, I think it was- uh, the Bronx, and he took his, his, I think his nonprofit called Humanity Forward, and he issued grants of $18,000 a year 
to a select group of families in that area, uh-huh. and he's he's trying to determine like what does this create from an economic output, an ec- economic output from a um, quality of life, from a productivity standpoint. He's trying to figure this out. He's doing kind of a, a a case study on this and trying to figure out like how does universal income pan out with respect to, I mean, like the problem is like, what are your metrics? Like, is it, is it GDP? Yeah, is it misery index? How like, it can be GDP. You, you don't need that small. You, and it, um, within that group, but like GDP is what the, the gross product of goods and services. So if you're just paying somebody for providing potentially no good or no service, yeah. does that, is that a meaningful metric? Or is it that you liberate them from having to worry about the basic income actions so that they can take on a job in some other form, making minimum wage or less? It's definitely a romantic thought. Um, someone like me, and this is, why I, this is why I recommend it, and I have alterations to it, um, obviously. You recommend UBI. Yeah. That's you're saying. Yeah, and I do, but there's, I have my changes. I have my own changes. You'll hear them shortly. Um, <laughs> the Sunday but someone pod- like me, <laughs> the Sunday it would work. podcast changes. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Sunday punch <laughs> changes to UBI. Um, New deal. <laughs> for someone like me, it would work, I think, because I would actually be like, oh, okay, like I'm going to take this money and I'm going to figure something. Matt Jones would figure a way, right? He'd be like, I'm going to put this towards something productive. Yeah, right. Um, and that's why I think that there should be a aptitude test to get it. And you, can, and you can take it as many times as you want and study as long as you want for it. And it's readily available. It's not like a trick. The questions it's are not clear. not a trick. Maybe you have a government-funded like, program to teach it because that's another thing that could be corrupted. Right. You know, here's $1,000. You're saying you have to be above an aptitude to get it. You have to be above a certain aptitude to get it. A um, UBI. Yes. That's crazy. That's not crazy. <laughs> why is that crazy? That will never pass. Yeah. But why? But, but Okay. It'll versus be, it'll versus be seen as, Pat, okay, obviously it wouldn't pass. I'm not saying that. I'm living in the romantic world, okay? But do, you don't agree with that? You have, here are the materials to study. We will give you the test. If you pass the test, you qualify for UBI. Well, because we know that you will take it and do something good with it. Sean, pull up the Maslow hierarchy, hierarchy of needs. Coming right up. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. What are you supposed I, I, to give this to everyone? I, I Not we, everyone's gonna do good things with it. Yeah, I think the argument against that is like if they say the SAT is is uh like if you have a learning for, if you have a learning disability, you can take it in a room longer if you want. It'd I just don't think you like could make SAT. a test that would be fair across the board. Well, the thing it would wouldn't be, be the, the people the, below the fair, that would be the ones the that fair, benefit the most. <laughs> <laughs> the fairness, well, that's true. But uh, yeah, I think uh, that's I'm gonna, true. I'm gonna like just screw up this statement. But Milton Friedman. I guess I, I guess I expect too much from people. Like, if you have the material, I know you're. Why can't you study it? I, I guess from the more, argument is they don't know how to retain and study. Well, I, I, I think that the question is like the question is not. The question is, well, he was going to say something. About what do you, milk. yeah, do it, do it, do it. I think there's two points. It's like, do you give the UBI to help people survive? Or do you give the UBI so that people don't have to worry about surviving to go ahead? I mean, I could see like half the population going either direction. And it's kind of like a subtle difference there, but that's yeah. how I would look at it. All right, Mike. And also the problem is everyone expects everything to be perfect immediately. So this is the hierarchy of needs. And uh, I mean, they talk about this all the time. Oh, damn. I'm interested in this. So let's say the UBI takes care of that bottom part, the basic needs. and then Food, water, warmth, housing. I guess you can say UBI and money would be there too in today's society. But then you go up this hierarchy up to the top to self-actualization where you become like, you know, self-aware. Starting you, you reach your, your full potential. Mm-hmm. You, you're just like overall happy with yourself. I think the question is, if you provide the basic needs and there's no like survival instinct, can you really get to the top of this pyramid? Like psychologically, do you need that survival instinct to overcome? I think do you need to overcome again, like your environment to get to the top, or is it something that you can provide and then get to the top anyways? It's not black or white. I think certain personalities yeah, are I, driven and they yeah. don't need it. Like, what's driving someone who already has a million dollars to then? Be like, no, I want to open this and this and this. it's like that's how you don't person, need it. Yeah. 
could retire right now if you want. And so, and so that's if it's if it's universal basic income, does everybody get it, or when do we cut it off? And it depends on like who's entering into this, you know, for lack of a better word, social contract. Because for some people, the universal basic income will fulfill physiologic and safety needs. Mm -hmm. For other people, it will be esteem, prestige, a podcast, my investments, that kind of thing. Like, like you said, Matt Jones, like how can I use this additional income to modulate mm -hmm. my higher levels? So mm -hmm. people are going to apply this differently. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that, I think that one of the problems I have with government in, in general <laughs> is that they, they, there is a tendency to be too paternalistic, too maternalistic, to tell us how to spend our money or use our wealth mm -hmm. or energy or time or talent or treasure and I think if you just give it to people, I think people figure it out. Like, <laughs> yeah. I need a roof over my head. Like, I blew it on, you know, whatever. Last week, blow, voov, click it, you know, whatever. <laughs> voov, but, click it. But this been, time, been it's there. like, let's buy podcast <laughs> equipment. Yeah. Let's get after it. So I think we have to let people kind of figure it out. And, and it's all made up anyways. It's kind of made up anyways. I mean, like, what, yeah. Like, what, so so that's that, that's that's the 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 second order third order consequence. It's like what is universal income? If we decide it's a good thing, let's yeah. just say we do as, as a as a as a given in this this argument. What did we do in um, trigonometry proofs as like a, as a guarantee in this proof? Like what are the second and third order consequences of universal basic income? Yeah, I wish you know like uh, well the th the consequence would be drug addict overdoses. Not inflation. It could be <laughs> inflation. Well, no, no, I'm working my way up. Drug addicts over drug addicts. I'm working my way up. I mean, so easily that could be that could be it, man. Yeah. I bet it would increase. Uh, yeah, overdoses, drug addicts and stuff. Um, alcoholism, possibly even depression. Every time I like enter into this like thing, I just think good parenting is like always the right oh, answer. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That's really it. <laughs> and, and, and that's, and, that's but, really our white privilege. That, and I, I will give them that. That's the white privilege. You know, we're like, why can't you? It's like they didn't have yeah. the, they didn't have the structure. Structure is important. And without structure, we're all animals. That's my main point. There's, <laughs> th th there's a lot to cover here. We, we should almost do like a dedicated podcast on this. But I think it comes down to like, how do we, how do we define value? Who gets to decide? And then how do we acknowledge and reward value in this world? And if, it, if, if value is being a human being, we want to reward that mm -hmm. just existence, universal basic income makes a ton of sense. Um, but then if it's, what do you want to add to a firm, a company, your own business, then there have to be kind of additional reward systems built into place for that with an income stream or something like that. Because it's, it's interesting to me that we would justify universal basic income ahead of things like healthcare or head of things like universal housing, which are like, we, we can we can execute oh, yeah. basic yeah, needs in other ways and obviate the need for a basic income just by providing universal basic housing or universal basic healthcare. Yeah, I agree with that. Never mind. But once we this, figure those out. <laughs> once we figure out how people can get paid universal basic income in Bitcoin, we basically got it all figured out. <laughs>